guys, welcome to today's video. We are here to do a video that I saw Samantha March film, so I'm gonna have Samantha March's video listed down below. But these are makeup products and makeup brands I would shop from if I wasn't a YouTuber. Now here is the difference between Samantha and I. She mentioned in her video that she does this full time. This is her career, so like it's basically her job to like know about all of the makeup things and she said she kind of had to like really dig deep down and kind of remember what it was like before being an influencer to think about products that she would be interested in but for me i feel like it was a little bit easier because while i do create youtube videos as a hobby and there are definitely products that i pick up because i'm a youtuber i i'm a full-time teacher and so there are also products that I get that have nothing to do with YouTube and I feel like it's easier for me to kind of tap into those products. So I have some makeup items here that I am going to share with you. But first of all, if you are new, hello and welcome. My name is Kelly and I love all things makeup and beauty. I love talking, I love makeup, I love talking about makeup. So if you like to chat about makeup too, I would love to have you subscribe and be part of the K-Bella fam. But why don't we go ahead and jump into the video. go in any particular order. I just have a list of products that I feel like I would have if I wasn't filming YouTube videos. And first of all, I would only have one foundation, okay? I don't have a huge foundation collection to begin with, but I have multiple foundations. And before my YouTube days and even in the beginning of my YouTube days, I would only have one foundation and I would use it up completely. And I could totally see myself using the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. Now I feel like NARS is a brand, you see it when you go into Sephora. I feel like I hear people who are not like in the YouTube beauty space talking about NARS. I'm pretty sure years ago, like before my YouTube days, I think I tried the NARS Sheer Glow Foundation. So I could see myself like trying this out, using it and really loving it. It's great for my dry skin. It's a great product and NARS is a brand that like I knew about before YouTube. So I definitely believe that that is a product that you would be able to find in my collection. Then I kind of looked at my eyeshadow palettes and I was like, you know, some of these I only know about because of YouTube or I only purchased them because I wanted to do a video with them. So like what eyeshadow palettes do I have that I feel like I would still use? Because if I'm thinking back to before my YouTube days, there are palettes that I had prior to YouTube that I don't have now because I found better formulas. Like the Urban Decay Nakeds, I had the Naked Original, and I feel like if I wasn't on YouTube, I would definitely have maybe some more Urban Decay Naked palettes, but I don't have them now because I have a slew of other eyeshadow palettes that I love more. Also, I had the Lorac Pro 1 and 2 palette, and I really loved those. I hit pan in both of those. I decluttered all of those palettes since just because I found formulas that I love more, but I could totally see myself like sticking with palettes like that if I weren't a YouTuber. However, another brand that I could totally see myself having and I wouldn't have a slew of eyeshadow palettes I would maybe have a handful but I could definitely see myself with the ABH palettes specifically the modern renaissance like this is my color story more so you know like these four shades right here so maybe like a modern ren mini could we get that but I definitely feel like this is a palette. I would see it in Sephora, I would see it in Ulta, and it's a color story that I could get down with. And as you can see, I use it a ton. So I definitely feel like the Modern Renaissance would be an eyeshadow palette that I had in my collection. I also feel like my Too Faced eyeshadow palettes would still be in my collection. Maybe not specifically like this pumpkin spice one. This one was a holiday one and I did pick it up because I heard about it on YouTube and the color story intrigued me. Maybe not specifically this one, but I could see the Too Faced chocolate bar being in my collection. Smegs actually got this for me as a gift and while I did hear about it on YouTube, there were tons of people in my life that I know who weren't YouTubers who saw this either in like Ulta or Sephora and went and picked it up and because it's such a basic neutral color story, I feel like I would have this in my collection. I don't reach for these palettes often now because there are formulas that I love more, but I was introduced to those formulas because of YouTube, if you know what I mean. So I think these would be palettes that I would have if I wasn't a YouTuber. Before my YouTube days, 
I was a Maybelline mascara gal. After my YouTube days, I'm still a Maybelline mascara gal. I have found Maybelline The Rocket Volume Express is like my favorite Maybelline mascara, but I've been using Maybelline mascaras since high school. So like this was easy. It was a given. I used it well before YouTube was even a thing and I'm using it now into YouTube. So sticking that one in here as well. And you know, I'm not 100% sure if I would do my eyebrows if I wasn't on YouTube, but I feel like I probably would because I feel like that's a thing that people do. And I mean, still ABH is popular outside of YouTube, especially for their brow products. So I feel like my ABH brow products, this one is the Brow Definer in Caramel. I also have the Brow Wiz in Caramel and the Clear Brow Gel. These are products that I feel like I would continue to use and purchase even if I wasn't on YouTube. I feel like I would be familiar. I think I was introduced to ABH from YouTube, but because of the popularity and the amount of people that know about these products, I feel like I probably would have used them anyway, even if I wasn't on YouTube. Then we have several MAC products. Now MAC, I feel like MAC was like the typical high school brand. I didn't use it in high school because I didn't have MAC money in high school, but I feel like a lot of people talked about MAC like when I was in high school and in college. And so I feel like MAC is probably a brand I would stick with. Like I do have two of their blushes. I have Melba and Mocha. I feel like I would probably, I wouldn't have a ton of blushes. I would maybe have two, possibly three, but I definitely feel like MAC blushes would be the way that I would go. I really enjoy the formula. I feel like they're super blendable. They go on nice and easy, like MAC is an easy brand to get. So I feel like those are probably blushes that I would have in my collection. And I also feel like I would use their lip products. Now I have this lip liner in Strip Down. Strip Down is more of a brown neutral shade. I also had Whirl for a while, and I feel like if I didn't have several other lip liners. I would probably still have Whirl in my collection, but I feel like MAC lip liners, I would probably just have two, like stripped down and Whirl, like that would be it. Maybe a third, a red one, but I feel like the MAC lip liners are what I would use to line my lips. And then I don't currently have any MAC lipsticks in my collection, but back in the day I had a ton. And before YouTube, MAC Hue was my very first MAC lipstick. It's a very, very light pink. A girl who is not familiar with YouTube at all was the one who introduced me to that shade. I used it until it was a little nub and I could use it no more, but I feel like MAC lipsticks are the lipsticks that I would have in my collection. Now I just have so many, you can see them right over there that I don't currently have any in my collection, but I have tons of MAC empties that I need to back to MAC, and I wanna get a MAC Modesty back in my collection. But those are probably the lipsticks that I would be wearing if I wasn't on YouTube. I'm wearing a Pat McGrath lipstick today. Definitely would not, would not be using that if I was not on YouTube. I do remember using bronzer before my YouTube days, I didn't really contour or anything like that. I remember using bronzer. Now I would not, I would not have this entire palette that I'm about to show you, but I could definitely see myself using the Hoola bronzer. The bronzer that I had before was the Too Faced Milk Chocolate Soleil, and I loved that, but I like to try new bronzers. So I think I would just have a single of the Hoola bronzer. Benefit is like a brand that's easy to find at Ulta. It's like right when you walk in. I feel like people who aren't on YouTube know about Benefit, like my friends who aren't on YouTube know about Benefit. So I feel like the Hoola bronzer is probably the bronzer that I would go to. And also I feel like they're boxed blushes. Now. I did have the old Dallas before and I really, really loved that one. I do enjoy Georgia and Sugar Bomb. I'm not sure what specific blushes I would have in my collection. I also just purchased a Rockateur. I think you can't get your hands on this anymore. I had searched on the Benefit site, on the Ulta site. I could not find it and I ended up finding this on, was it Nordstrom or Saks Fifth Avenue? I can't remember, I think I found it on Saks and I purchased it, but then I looked since to link it and I couldn't find it anymore. So, I mean, hopefully this is still good to use. It doesn't look used, but I can see some shimmer on the bottom and the top and then none in the middle. I really loved this blush and I decluttered it and then I regretted it and I wanted to repurchase it and then it went like out of stock and I think it's discontinued, but I feel like the Benefit boxed blushes are blushes that I would have in my collection as well. And one last product, this is like 
my bougie product. I probably could have gone through more, but I felt like this was like a good amount to share with you. But one last product that I do believe would be in my collection, even if I wasn't on YouTube, is my Natasha Denona Super Glow Highlighter in the shade Fair. And the reason why I say that I would use this even if I wasn't on YouTube. I was introduced to a lot of Natasha Denona through YouTube, but this specific product, I feel like it's not super hyped up on YouTube. You hear people talk about it every now and then, but the person who actually put me on this is Smags, my best friend Smags. She was the one who was wearing this highlighter and I was like, oh my gosh, what do you have on your face? And every time I would say that, she said Natasha Denona Super Glow and Fair. So finally, she picked this up for me for my birthday and I feel like this is a product that because it was a friend who introduced it to me, like if I wasn't on YouTube, that's probably still how it would have happened. You know, like Smegs or someone else would have eventually introduced me to this highlighter. And although Natasha Denona is bougie, I do think that even if I wasn't on YouTube, I still would have spent the money to pick up this highlighter. It just probably would have been my only highlighter in my collection. But that is going to do it for this video. I hope y'all enjoyed seeing some of the makeup items that I believe would be in my collection if I wasn't a YouTuber. I would love to know your comments down below because honestly, if you're watching this, even if you don't have a YouTube channel, you're still part of the YouTube community. You're still immersed in what we're talking about. You know, like you still, I feel like can be an influencer on your own because you're hearing about things on YouTube, you're sharing products in the comments all the time, like influencing people who do create YouTube videos. So I feel like even if you're not a content creator, you still are someone who is heavily influenced by YouTube and you probably have a lot of makeup items in your collection that YouTube inspired you to buy. But I would love to challenge you to like take a look at your collection and think about if you weren't a consumer of YouTube, like what are some products that you think you would have in your collection anyway? I would love to know, but thank you, Samantha, for creating this video. I thought it was super fun. If you didn't see Sam's video, go ahead and check it out. I will have it linked down below, but that is going to do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed before you go. That way I can see you in the next one. Bye.